Um, so with stomach cancers, we know that there are two main types, um, the intestinal and the diffuse uh, uh, stomach cancers. The intestinal type is due or caused by an inflammatory process which starts from gastritis then progresses on to some, a little bit more serious kind of gastritis. And finally, when there are, this inflammation results in changes in the uh, inner lining of our stomach. And this is a type of cancers that are very common in elderly men. There is a diffuse type, which are more common in women and also in younger patients. But they do tend to have a, a worse outcome, uh, meaning that they usually come, uh, patients usually come uh, and see the doctor only when the disease is very advanced. Um, and that's a diffuse type, but both types are still considered adenocarcinoma. And this is something, a term that you may not, we have seen before, um, but it really just means a, a, a type of cancer, a common type of cancer. So stomach cancers are mostly found, um, a third of them are found in the gastric cardia, which is, as you remember, the first part of the stomach, like in this first picture on the left. Then um, another third are found in the antrum or the lower part of the stomach. And then the rest are found in diff different parts of the stomach with um, the highest number of being in the body of the stomach. The risk factors associated with stomach cancers is anything which increases your chance of getting a disease but if you do have that risk factor it doesn't mean that you definitely get the disease but and if you don't have risk factor it doesn't mean that you will not get the disease but it's sometimes what we're trying to understand is that it increases your, your chance of getting the disease so for stomach cancers we know that a bacteria called h pylori or helicobacter pylori is associated very strongly with stomach cancers and so because of the, um, the realization of this and, and, and then subsequent detection and then treatment of this infection, the number of stomach cancers has been um, coming down. Um, another kind of uh, autoimmune condition called pernicious anemia, also, but this is a rare, rare condition. Other risk factors would be uh, things like obesity, um, what you eat, if you have a diet that is very high in red meats and processed foods, that has been shown to also be uh, associated with uh, stomach cancers. Um, and lifestyle habits like smoking, alcohol, and of, um, and of course, if you have a very strong family history with a first degree relative um, that has stomach cancers, that is also a risk factor. Like this. Well, I think in the early stage, a lot of times, um, the patients may not have symptoms. Um, however, um, that's the reason why a lot of patients with stomach cancers do present at, at the late stages. Um, but patients may uh, come to see us with uh, symptoms of uh, bloatedness or just a feeling of very um, uh, swollen tummy. They may have uh, tummy pain. Um, they may also complain of loss of weight, loss of appetite, not feeling like they want to eat or something we call early satiety. So early satiety means that when you eat just a little bit of food, you feel full already. And that's because, if you remember the picture of the stomach, if there is a growth there and it causes a little bit of blockage, and so when the food enters your stomach, you already feel like your stomach is very full, and so you don't feel like eating anymore. And that can then result in loss of weight as well. Patients can also complain of uh, nausea as well as vomiting. Um, and if, the, the if they do have a tumour and it bleeds, 
it can result in a blood um, being passed in the motion or what we call melina or black stools. Um, and if the blood uh, loss is significant, they will then result in something called anemia or low level of uh, hemoglobin or red blood cell count.